In this explanation video, we will discuss the Republic Act 11285, also known as the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Act of the Philippines. The topics we will cover include, what is the Republic Act and its purpose? Who does RA 11285 apply to? The obligations of designated establishments. Employee responsibilities. The roles of agencies. The labeling, testing, and verification requirements. Fuel economy for transport. Energy for businesses. Energy efficiency project benefits. The penalties of non-compliance. And ISO 50001 and compliance. As an introduction, what is RA 11285? The Republic Act No. 11285 is an act that institutionalizes energy efficiency and conservation, providing incentives for energy efficiency projects in the Philippines. The scope of the act sets a framework for energy efficiency and conservation policies, promoting the responsible use of energy, renewables, and responsibilities for agencies and private entities. The purpose of the Act is to ensure a stable energy supply in the Philippines to offset the impact of costly imported fuels on local markets, to safeguard the environment to support the country's economic and social development goals, to promote renewable energy adoption and optimize the sustainable use of the country's energy resources, to institutionalize energy efficiency and conservation as a way of life to create and execute energy sufficiency, stability, and affordability plans and programs, and to promote the use of renewable energy technologies while reinforcing existing laws. Who does RA11285 apply to? RA11285 applies to all businesses in the Philippines, with varying responsibilities based on their annual energy consumption. According to the Philippine Department of Energy DOE, businesses will be categorized into two types based on their energy usage. These are Type 1 businesses and Type 2 businesses. Type 1 businesses have an annual energy consumption of 500,000 kWh to 4 million kWh for the previous year. Type 1 businesses require a CECO, also known as a Certified Energy Conservation Officer. Type 2 businesses apply to businesses with an annual energy consumption of more than 4 million kilowatt hours for the previous year. Type 2 businesses require a CEM, also known as a Certified Energy Manager. Both Type 1 and Type 2 establishments have specific obligations, these include incorporating an ISO 50001 or similar energy management system policy into business operations. Establishing programs promoting energy efficiency, conservation, and sufficiency, including renewable energy technology installations. Maintaining records of monthly energy consumption data and other related information. Establishing annual targets, measurement methods, and verification procedures for implementing energy efficiency and conservation projects. Submitting a yearly energy consumption and conservation report to the Department of Energy by April 15th of each year. Hiring a certified energy auditor or an accredited energy service company to do an energy audit every three years and submit a report to the Department of Energy upon completion. For Type 1 establishments, hiring a CECO, and for Type 2, hiring a CEM. Both can be chosen internally or recruited externally. Informing the Department of Energy within 10 working days about the appointment or separation of CECOs or CEMs. And improving average energy consumption per unit by meeting the Department of Energy's annual reduction goals in the National Energy Efficiency Conservation Program. Establishments are expected to hire one of the two types of energy auditors, depending on the business type they are categorized with. The Certified Energy Conservation Officer is a professional who demonstrates experience and ethical fitness. They supervise and maintain the facilities of Type 1 designated establishments to ensure compliance with energy usage regulations. The Certified Energy Manager is a licensed engineer, similar to CECOs who are selected by Type 2 designated establishments to proficiently plan, lead, manage, coordinate, monitor and evaluate the implementation of sustainable energy management. But, what are they responsible for? Both auditors manage the energy consumption of facilities, equipment and devices. The CECO and CEM must administer the following. Implement and improve energy efficiency measures. Conduct regular energy audits. 
Monitor and manage energy control and consumption. Prepare periodic energy consumption and energy conservation program reports. Agencies also have an important role, for example, energy service companies, which are legally classified as energy efficiency providers, can offer products and services for effective energy usage and cost savings. They provide energy supply management, financial solutions, technical expertise, equipment supply, and monitoring for energy performance and savings, including lighting, motors, heating, and cooling products and systems. Energy service companies must be certified to showcase technical and managerial proficiency in energy efficiency projects, encompassing energy audits, design engineering, providing or arranging project financing, construction management, effective maintenance of energy efficient technologies, and verifying energy savings. The Department of Energy sets the minimum energy performance standards for commercial, industrial, and transport sectors in consultation with stakeholders, and also oversees the development and implementation of the National Energy Efficiency and Conservation Plan. The Department of Energy can conduct on-site inspections at designated establishments during business hours to assess energy-consuming facilities, identify efficiency improvements, and verify RA11285 compliance. The Department of Energy collaborates with other agencies to implement programs for reducing energy use through effective electricity management, including promoting efficient electricity usage, shifting consumption to off-peak periods, and optimizing power system infrastructure. The product energy efficiency standards and labeling program mandates that minimum energy performance requirements must be on all energy-consuming products. Manufacturers, importers, and distributors of energy-consuming products must comply with minimum energy performance, conduct testing, and provide product information to the Department of Energy. Selling or importing products that do not meet MEP requirements and labeling standards is prohibited. Additionally, the Department of Energy enforces a mandatory energy efficiency rating and labeling system for specific products, displaying energy efficiency, consumption, brand, and model information. The Department of Energy requires energy labels on all energy-consuming products and equipment. The following types of businesses must display these labels to enable consumers to make informed decisions. Manufacturers, importers, suppliers, distributors, retailers. For the testing and verification process, the Department of Energy must return tested products to manufacturers, importers, suppliers, distributors or retailers unless there is reasonable evidence of a violation, as per the Act. The Department of Energy has the authority to test, disassemble, and inspect energy-consuming products to determine their true efficiency. They can contract with qualified suppliers and entities to conduct testing. The fuel economy must also adhere to regulations. They must provide technical information on fuel economy ratings to help consumers make informed decisions, and the Department of Energy will develop fuel efficiency testing guidelines to validate the information. Vehicles, vehicle manufacturers, importers, and dealers must adhere to the Department of Energy's fuel economy labeling requirements, which were developed in collaboration with the Departments of Environment and Natural Resources and Transportation. For effective energy efficiency in both new and existing commercial and industrial buildings like hospitals, schools, government offices, and more, Local government units must implement these measures as part of the building permit process. New buildings must adhere to the energy-conserving design guidelines outlined by the Department of Energy, in collaboration with the Department of Public Works and Highways. These guidelines can be updated to incorporate the latest energy-efficient technologies. State-owned structures should follow the Government Energy Management Program and Interagency Energy Efficiency and Conservation Committee guidelines. Retrofitting existing buildings should also follow the energy-conserving design guidelines provided by the Department of Energy and the Department of Public Works and Highways, with room for updates to embrace emerging energy efficiency technologies. State-owned and leased buildings must follow the Government Energy Management Program and the Interagency Energy Efficiency and Conservation Committee guidelines. Now, let's delve into the advantages presented by energy efficiency projects. First of all, the Department of Energy Certified Energy Efficiency Projects will receive incentives for 10 years, including tax benefits and inclusion in the Board of Investments Annual Investment Priorities Plan. Also, 
establishments implementing energy efficiency projects will receive non-fiscal incentives, such as awards, recognition for innovation efforts, and technical assistance from government agencies. Financial institutions will also offer concessional financial packages for Department of Energy-endorsed renewable energy and energy efficiency projects. So, what happens to non-compliant businesses? Before imposing fines for violations, the Department of Energy may take measures like requiring explanations, providing recommendations, disclosing non-compliance, and issuing orders. Prohibited acts include failing to comply with energy labeling, altering energy labels, providing false or misleading information, selling non-compliant products, not appointing a CECO or a CEM, failing to submit to an on-site inspection, failing to comply with Department of Energy orders, failing to submit reports required, and violating any provision of the IRR codes and guidelines. So, in relation to ISO 50001, how can this standard help with our A11285 compliance? Section 20 of the Act states that establishments with an annual energy consumption of at least 100,000 kilowatt hours but less than 500,000 kilowatt hours in the prior year must submit an annual energy consumption report to the Department of Energy. They must integrate an energy management system policy into business operations based on ISO 50001 or any other standards identified by the Department of Energy. Thresholds will be periodically reviewed and adjusted if necessary. These establishments may voluntarily undergo external energy audits or quality control assessments to assist them in their energy planning and management. So, what exactly is ISO 50001? ISO 50001 is an internationally recognized standard for energy management systems established by the International Organization for Standardization. The standard holds significant value to businesses by facilitating cost savings and optimizing energy consumption, reducing energy bills over time. It helps to support resource conservation and helps reduce greenhouse gas emissions, leading to a reduced environmental footprint. ISO 50001 helps businesses comply with legal regulations, including Republic Act No. 11285, which mandates the implementation of an energy management system based on ISO 50001 for all businesses. If you are interested in ISO 50001, you can contact IMSM for expert advice on the standard and how it can help you stay compliant with RA11285.